bit of anger's Kevin Costner, plus gentle tunes from the Doves and Jaywalking. Your local news is next. A state trooper suspended for that response to a 911 call. A high school student suspended for posting a picture of the principal smoking on school grounds. And a hockey dad charged for fighting with a coach. The News Channel 10 Night Team starts right now. And that angry ice rink incident tops your local news tonight. An East Providence firefighter is arraigned on assault charges. And the Night Team's Aaron Logan has more. A locker room fight Sunday at the Rhode Island Sports Center turns into a visit to jail for an East Providence firefighter. He was concerned because his son had been injured. 39-year-old Jeffrey Church has been an East Providence firefighter for seven years. His colleagues say he's a good guy and enjoys going to his son's hockey games. His, his whole uh, occupation is saving people's lives and helping people. Uh, this man's never been in trouble before. But witnesses told police that Church went to confront the opposing team's coach about why his son was forcefully pushed during the game. That's when a fight started. The opposing team's assistant coach, 49-year-old Joseph Pacella, stepped in and ended up with a broken leg. After an investigation, North Smithfield police called Church Tuesday and informed him of the intending charges, one count of felony assault, one count of disorderly conduct, and one count of simple assault and battery. That's when Church turned himself in. The broken leg was a result of, of an accident of people falling back on one another. So I don't, I don't know how it got charged as a felony. It... Church was picked up at the North Smithfield Police Department Church, after being arraigned by the Justice of the Peace. Right. He would he not comment. Saudi, uh... Church's arraignment date is set for May 31st. Pacella is still at Rhode Island Hospital with a broken leg. In North Smithfield, Aaron Logan, News Channel 10. Why did the teenager murder nine people on an Indian reservation in Minnesota before turning the gun on himself? Investigators say 16-year-old Jeffrey Weiss was a loner who had posted anti-social messages on a neo-Nazi website. We don't know why he shot and killed his grandfather and the man's companion before gunning down seven others at his high school, grinning and waving, according to witnesses. Mr. Weiss continued to pursue them into the classroom. It is there that he opened fire, killing a number of students and the teacher. And just boom, 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 boom. A couple more shots went off and they told us to get down. At least seven other people were wounded, two of them critically. Another loss for the mother of a young murder victim killed to keep her quiet. 15-year-old Jennifer Rivera was shot just as she was about to testify in another murder case. Rivera's mother lost a lower court claim against the Providence Police Department and just lost an appeal in federal court. She blamed the authorities for not protecting her daughter, but the court said the police never violated her civil rights. A local high school principal admits she was wrong to smoke on school property, and the student who got it on camera is now paying the price. The night team's Michelle Brown is live from Central High School in Providence with the story. Michelle? Well, Patrice, a spokesperson for the school department told the media earlier this evening that Central High School principal Elaine L. Magno has admitted to smoking on school property and promised not to do it again. She received a warning from the superintendent, but the student who caught her on camera smoking has received a much harsher punishment. I went around and I hid behind a wall and I just stuck the camera out behind the wall. So you, all you can see was like the little camera, but just barely. And that's how I got the shots of her smoking. 17-year-old Eliza Velasquez says he's bringing to light the truth about Elaine L. Magno. He claims a central high school principal was breaking the law by smoking on school grounds. She just got in trouble for letting students go out to the bathroom, and then here she is smoking on school property and everything. Eliza not only snapped the photos, he posted them on a website created by his friend. He shouldn't get in trouble for this. This is freedom of speech. But he did get in trouble. He was suspended indefinitely last Friday for violating the code of behavior for the Providence School Department. The department also claims he harassed and slandered Principal El Magno. We've reviewed his website and what's up there, and, and we don't see any basis whatsoever for any sort of allegation of slander. Uh, uh, he's made clear that he's just expressing his own views about something, and he's putting up pictures about a particular factual matter that really can't be disputed. So why did he take the photos? Velasquez says despite rumors, it's not a personal vendetta against the principal. No, I had no problems at all with her before, no problems at all. You know, I was on good terms with her. And uh, all I did was take pictures of her. She's on public, on public property, and I posted them on a website. I didn't, you know, tamper with the pictures at all or anything. I'm just showing it how it is. 
Now, the school department has given Velasquez an ultimatum. Take the pictures down from the website or remain suspended indefinitely. He says he does want to return to school, but doesn't feel he should have to take the pictures down to do so. He's meeting with the student affairs office tomorrow for a behavioral hearing that could determine his fate. We're live in Providence tonight. Michelle Brown, News Channel 10. A Connecticut state trooper is suspended for unprofessional conduct. Listen to how he responded to a 911 call about a motorcycle crash in Lisbon, Connecticut. Yes, the trooper says, too bad. The motorcyclist, 21-year-old Justin Sawyer, died of a severe head injury a week after the crash. Hopkinton police are investigating a man's death in their custody. 44-year-old Albert Johnson was arrested on Sunday for failing to appear on a drunk driving charge. He was found dead hours later in a holding cell. No word yet on the cause of death. The federal appeals court in Atlanta is considering an emergency request to reinsert Terry Schiavo's feeding tube following a lower court's refusal today. And Kristen Dahlgren has more from Florida. The emergency request to reinsert Terry Schiavo's feeding tube has been denied by one federal judge and is still under consideration in a federal appeals court. Now her parents and their supporters are again looking at other options. Don't let my daughter die of thirst. Congressional Republicans urged Florida Governor Jeb Bush to again try to intervene. But the attorney for Terry's husband, Michael, had harsh words about any such efforts. Yes, we know that you Floridians out there do not want the legislature meddling in this, in this matter. For years, Terry's husband fought to have her feeding tube removed. He maintains that Terry never wanted to be kept alive artificially. Her parents still hope she can recover and have fought to keep her alive. But on Tuesday, a federal court refused to restore the feeding tube or review the case. The parents appealed immediately and are still waiting to hear the decision. A wait made more difficult by the knowledge that every minute Terry is without food and water could be one minute too late. A priest who visited with Terry Schiavo said she looked strong, but doctors only expect her to be able to live one to two weeks without food and water. In Pinellas Park, Florida, Kristen Dahlgren, NBC News. An explosion at a chemical company in Lemister blows the roof off the building. The hands of one employee were burned in the blast at Polycarbon Industries. The building is apparently designed so the roof will come off in the event of a gas explosion, and that's just what happened. No word yet on the cause of the blast. Up next, a new exhibit honoring our fallen soldiers in Iraq. A warning before you respond to those official-looking emails asking for account information. And later, dramatic video of an out-of-control truck and why the driver is a hero. Ah, spring today and spring warmth across the area. Look at our weather net numbers from the day. You can see we're now in the 30s after highs in the low to mid-50s. Believe it or not, snow is on the way. I'll tell you about when to expect it and how much. Coming up. On an all-new Tonight Show, Kevin Costner remembers a very special moment with his mom. I looked at my mother and I just threw up all over her. <laughs> Plus, Larry the Cable Guy, a surprise from Farrah Fawcett and a feminist jaywalking. What is the ERA? Have you heard of that? Is it the gun control? Then on Conan, Ozzy Osbourne and Jared Miller's Wild Animals tonight. And this week, Paris Hilton hosts Saturday Night Live with her glamorous friends and musical guests Keen and other hot young acts. On Saturday Night Live this week... That's hot. Welcome to the Lincoln Mercury Roadshow Sales Event, starring the all-new Mercury Mariner. Available with intelligent four-wheel drive, plus roadshow values on every new Mercury. Now lease the compact Mercury Mariner, just $2.29 a month for a more stylish take on the compact SUV. But only through March 31st, during the Lincoln Mercury Roadshow Sales Event. And see the all-new Mercury Mariner and all-wheel drive Montego. If you're getting married, we'll rent you a tuxedo for as little as 50 bucks, which is pretty good, considering her dress probably costs as much as your car. Rent four tuxedos, and the groom's is free. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. 
It's amazing what people can do when they're confident in their equipment. You think about that. Then you build a range of turbocharged performance sedans with legendary Volvo safety. The 2005 Volvo S60s. Bridget is back. Channel. Universal Home Entertainment, Floor Center, and NBC 10 invite you to log on to TurnTo10.com for a chance to win the DVD and a trip for you and a guest to London, England. What? Bridget Jones, The Edge of Reason. Buy it on DVD. The GMC Envoy has the government's highest side impact crash test rating, five stars. And for extra safety, it has one more star available, the added security of OnStar. Never underestimate the value of professional grade. Qualified buyers get this 05 Envoy 4x4 SLE with Smart Buy financing for around $289 a month. Call for residency restrictions and other details. It's all part of GMC's NCAA March Madness event. See the pros at your New England GMC dealers. War heroes from Iraq and Afghanistan are being honored in a new exhibit at Arlington National Cemetery. And Tracy Potts reports on the faces of the fallen memorial. 1,314 faces, men and women who died in Iraq and Afghanistan, each with a story to tell. I guess there's always that crazy side of them that we love so much, you know, that other people didn't see. Army Specialist Jonathan Kephart, a 21-year-old gunner from Oil City, Pennsylvania, killed in Iraq on April 9, 2004. There were two rocket-propelled grenades fired at him. The second one uh, just grazed the Humvee and exploded, and that's what took him down. Jonathan was a Christian, and I believe that with all my heart that he was able to stand as he did because he had a peace about what would happen to him after life. Many families traveled thousands of miles to see these portraits, just to be here, just to remember. That, that was my whole reason for doing this, that people would stop and think about each and every one of them as an individual. Washington, D.C. artist Annette Poland came up with the idea. He was 19 years old. He's the youngest one I did. She recruited 150 other artists and did 10 portraits herself. I feel that um, the 10 I did are part of my family. Other than size, the artists were given virtually no restrictions on how to create these portraits. There are pencil drawings, paintings, some used wood, some used glass. Each one is as unique as the person it portrays. A display of gratitude and respect and a chance to remember the faces of war. Tracy Potts, NBC News at Arlington National Cemetery. Up next, a court date for the suspect in the plot to kidnap David Letterman's son. Identity thieves going fishing for your information. And this time, the online trap is pretty convincing. I'll show you what to look for. Closed captioning on NBC10 brought to you by Cardi's Furniture Superstores. Same day delivery, seven days a week. Time for new furniture? Save now at Alpert's. Buy all the furniture you want today with 0% interest for two years and no monthly payments for the first 12 months. Choose from the best selection of furniture under one roof. 